boundary using the method of the image. So here I will just directly use the example to help you to understand how can we use this method to solve the question. First of all, we let's look at the question. So we have a point charge Q here. Now we have a conducting plane, which is a boundary. So and the conducting ground gr uh, plane is grounded and the charge Q is distance D above the grounding plane. So we want to calculate the potential V and the charge density, sigma. So let me first say the conclusion. So to calculate this V and sigma, it is equivalent to a problem where you treat this conducting plane as a mirror. Then this mirror will reflect your charge here to the other side of the mirror, which will give you minus Q. And the distance is MD, so is the location 0, 0, minus D. So this means this the potential of sigma here is equivalent to a question where you only have two charges. One is a Q, one is another minus Q located here, which is the mirror part relative to the uh, boundary. So this is a method. So then now I want to show why, uh, show you how, how to, the example in this case is really true. Okay, so let's first write down the boundary condition here. So we have two boundary we can use. First, on the conducting surface. So we already know that it's grounded, so we can say at z equal to zero, v potential x, y, zero is equal to zero. And modulate another boundary. We can use, for example, this region, which is f very, very far away from our system, which is infinite away, because the e is proportional to one over r squared. V is proportional to one over r. So when r is approaching to infinity, v or e will also approach to zero. So we can have a boundary here when z is approaching to infinity, your v, x, y, infinity away is equal to zero. So now let's use write down the effective potential determined by the uh, method of image. So now we have now we have a simplified question. Now we only have two charge Q and minus Q. So for any generic points x, y, z. So this is the distance r1. This is the distance r2. We will have r1 squared is equal to x squared plus y squared plus z minus d squared. r2 squared is equal to x squared plus y squared plus z plus d squared. As a result, now we can write down the potential which v is equal to Q over 4 pi epsilon 0, 1 over R1, minus 1 over R2. We have a minus sign because they have a minus sign in the Q. So this is a effective potential at this point. Now we want to demonstrate this is true. First of all, let's check on the boundary. By looking at this equation on the boundary, When z is equal to zero, your r1 and r2, they are equal to each other, actually equal to x squared plus y squared plus z equal to zero minus d squared and plus d squared, same, so d squared, square root. 
so from here you can see v is equal to zero so this is what we got from this equation and you can see it's consistent with what we have say at the very beginning this is the condition we know the boundary condition we can also look at on the other boundary z approaching to infinity your r1 is equal to r2 is equal to square root of x square plus y square plus because z is infinity where so z minus d and z plus d can all ignore the contribution from d so it just z square so also we got v will be equal to zero so you can see we have shown in our simplified picture the potential v at the boundary are consistent so this is the first step if you want to further demonstrate we can check whether the Laplace or Poisson's equation are still valid so in this question if we consider the Laplace and Poisson's equation first of all if we consider the point which is not at the charge Q so we can use the Laplace equation so we will have lambda v square uh, la, la, Laplace v this should be equal to zero is this true? all you need to do is just insert this v into the equation you will say it is equal to zero and also we need to show if we look at the point exact at this q here which means on zero zero d is where the it will follow the Poisson's equation where actually here you should have a rho over epsilon zero if you remember this because now we don't have a continuous charge we have a point charge point charge actually is q times the delta function over epsilon zero so we need to demonstrate whether our equation the e effective potential satisfies this one now we insert into the Laplacian equation which is del operator on del operator on v so this is equal to del operator on q over 4 pi epsilon 0 then del operator on r1 r2 so this is a constant we can take out q 4 pi epsilon 0 del operator and the del operator on r1 this actually give you the 1 over r1 square along r1 direction minus 1 over r2 square on r2 direction so when you look at this point zero zero d if you remember in the last lecture we show 1 over r square r direction this is actually the delta function so now on this point exact on the charge in your r1 is the exact location of the delta function and this r2 is zero at this location because your data function is here when it's not at this origin this one is actually zero so you finally will have q over 4 pi epsilon zero then times 4 pi data function so you can cancel this 4 pi which will give you q data function epsilon zero so you can see these are consistent with this one
And so you can see our you the the for the potential we determined by using this method of image also satisfy the Laplacian and Boson's equation under the condition given here. So now we have demonstrated the the potential we got from the method of image is the equivalent potential. Now we using this equation to check the charge density. So this is the conducting surface and so the other side is the conductor so we can use the uh, uh, equation partial V along the normal direction so is equal to minus sigma over epsilon zero so sigma will be equal to minus epsilon zero partial V partial n so now we insert the V into the equation so when z is equal to zero we can finally get q d over two pi rho square plus d square three over two so this is the charge density on the surface okay so this is the last part of the lecture and if you want to know more about what we have learned you can refer to Griffith's book with the related chapters. Thank you.